Welcome to this week's video and this week I'm making a DS Lite for 2025. So I'm going to do this with the help of Extreme Rate. I've got a new case from them. When I saw it on the website I thought I'm going to have to have it and I'm going to have to get a new DS Lite all modernised. As you can see it's a retro style SNES look. It's a nice matte grey. There's a 10% discount code for the Extreme Rate website in the description too. Got coloured buttons to go inside. And as you can see in the kit, there's loads of different colours, so you can pretty much customise it as much as you want. And I'm also going to throw in a USB-C connection on it as well, to make it as modern as possible. So no more OEM charging from Nintendo, we're going for the full-on USB-C. So this is an old DS Lite that I've got. I thought it was going to be okay till it turned on and realised the screens are damaged. This is another one, so I do have quite a few. This one, a bit rough looking, but it's perfect. So within the kit, it comes with a screwdriver and a lipper. So first off, we remove all the screws. I do recommend trying to keep the same screws they take out in the right position. The kit does come with new screws, however, I always like to use the originals. So we just use the lipper around the edge. And then take out the shoulder buttons off. We just release the cables at the top on the Wi-Fi chip and then there's two screws that hold in the motherboard I'm going to remove the Wi-Fi chip as well there's a little ribbon cable in the top which connects to the touch screen so we just disconnect that we just need to unthread the black wire from underneath the game card and then we just give it a wiggle you might just need to push the screen as you can see it's attached but if we slightly open it and push the screen up then it will all hold out and we've got a connection in the corner so we can release the screen there and then we can release this bit and the motherboard comes away from the housing so there's two screws in the top we just need to be really careful when we're releasing this as we don't want to be ripping any of the ribbon cables as they are very delicate so we'll just very carefully separate it and then there's a slot on the edge where you just have to carefully feed the ribbon cables through and also the two wires when we take the screws out the top does actually slide off but I didn't realise to use the lipper to pull it apart and I'm just going to get the new one to come in so we've got a little metal rip o-ring that needs to go in the corner and then we'll take the top screen out again you just need to ravel up all of the ribbon cables and then very carefully push them through be very gentle you don't want to be ripping the cables now as you're going to have to go out and find a new screen if you do that. So pull it through nice and slow. Feed the two wires through it as well. Just take your time, there's no rush to do this. This is pretty much one of the hardest parts of the build. So it does come with another O ring on the other side within the kit, so we just pop that in. And now we're putting the new screen into place, so you just need to ravel them up as tight as you can and then feed them through. It takes a little bit of manoeuvring to do it, but it's not too hard. Use your tweezers if you need to. And then once they're through, that's all you need to do. Don't pull them anymore. Get the speakers into position, they just fit in nice and easy. And then the top screen comes with a new border. So it's got an adhesive as well. So we just attach the adhesive within the top screen, push it down a little bit and then you can poke the centre out and then you just remove the old top layer, remove any of the old stickiness, just peel it all off, make sure it's all nice and clean, try and keep it away from the screen and then we can remove this layer. So the screen just folds over and then you just pop it into place push it down make sure it's all nice and firm which this one is and then as you can see on the other side there's a bit of stickiness gone over the edges this is where the new screen protector goes on so we'll remove the first layer and then place it in make sure there's no dust or dirt underneath then we go back to the other side so you just need to run these wires underneath so what you need to do is slightly lift up the screen and then feed the wires underneath so they all lay nice and flat then this white one goes in 
So it goes between the ribbon cable and up the other side. So this is the speaker. So you just need to feed it into position. And then we've got the black one, which is the antenna. That one goes in as well. It runs along the side. So just pop it into place. So when I was putting the back cover on, I realized that they actually slide on. They don't clip on. This is the issue I had with the first one. So just slightly line up, just slightly off. It will clip into place and then you just need to push up and then it all slides in. And it should be all nice and tight, along the edges, and then that's your top screen ready to go. So I'll pop the four screws in and then I'll attach the covers in a bit. So now we'll get the back cover up and ready. So first off we need to put this grey part in. This is what the stylus sits in. And then this metal part here is the protection for when you're sliding in your Game Boy Advance games. So we just need to get that into position. Now we're moving on to the USB-C install. So I'm wrapping anything which is delicate or plastic with capped on tape because we're going to be applying a little bit of heat. You can do this with a solder iron, but I thought a bit of hot air would probably be easier. So we get it under the microscope, we'll apply a little bit of flux on the back of it. And then I'm going to come in with 360 degrees C heat on 70% airflow. Keep moving it around. And the solder melted relatively quickly, quicker than I was expecting. And then it's just going to use its own weight to be able to drop out. So just keep moving it around. Make sure you're hitting all six of the spots. And then there we go. It's come out. And we've got it nice and clear on the back. And no damage. Give it a little clean of isopropyl so we can move on to the next stage. So I'm going to apply a little bit of fresh flux and I'm going to apply a little bit of solder. So I'm going to try and clean these portholes out as best as I can. So we'll come with a wick. So if you can clear them out completely, bonus. If not, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be flowing some new flux through them in a minute. So we line up the new USB-C port. I bought these clamps which are to hold screen in place when you're replacing them. So I'm going to use one of these. So we'll just come in and get the USB-C port lined up. And then we'll come in with a clamp and tighten it into position so the port doesn't move when we try and solder. So as you can see, we're going to start with these two connections at the bottom. So these are the two data transfer pins. We're going to transfer the data and the power. So we come with a little bit of flux and then we come with our solder nine and we just need to flow in as much solder as possible. So we'll just hold it in there. Hold your solder nine on and put as much flux as you can so that we know that the flux is attaching to the new port and also flowing through to the connections on the motherboard. We're coming from a different angle and as you can see they're looking pretty solid but there's no harm adding more so again just keep adding flux just keep adding solder so now we're going to apply some flux and solder from the back so this is to flow through make sure it all connects nice and solidly so we'll just line it all up and then it's the same again just make sure you put your solder line on flow in as much solder as you can to make sure that it flows all the way through and keeps it nice and strong. I'm keeping the clamp on there so that it doesn't move when the extra heat's applied to the motherboard and it will keep going through and it will clamp it nice and solid and there won't be any chance of any movement when we're using the USB-C port. And that's that done. So we can give it a little clean and then we can move on to assembling the whole DS Lite. So we'll get the screen attached first. So you just need to thread the two cables through first And then you just need to get the ribbon cable. So there is a slot that you need to slightly angle through as best you can. Sometimes it helps if you have a pair of tweezers. So just get them through. And then once it pokes through like that, just give it a little pull. And then we just need to give it a wiggle. And then we can get it all lined up. And then you can see it's gone through. And that's the hardest part. Reconnect this edge cover so that it goes on there. And then we just the two screws and then there you can see it's opening as it shuts and closes 
Next up, we're going to get our buttons where you can put any choice of buttons in that you want. There's black ones, there's grey ones as well. I'm going with the full on SNES colours, so I made sure I googled the right ones to make sure I was using the right colours in the right position, which I currently have. And now we just put the new membranes in. So I am using new ones that come within the kit. And then before we put the motherboard in, I'm going to give it a once over, give it a good clean with isopropyl. And it's probably never had a good clean in 20 plus years. And then we go to the bottom screen. So this edge layer is no longer needed. So I'm going to remove this first. And then I was going to stick with the original touchscreen, but I saw they were pretty cheap on AliExpress, so I decided to buy a new touchscreen as well. So I'm getting a perfectly brand new looking touchscreen on the bottom. So all you need to do is carefully lift this up. It will pull away. It's not too hard. It comes away with the adhesive, which is good. And we'll get our new one. So we just remove the first layer. And then you just take the edging off for the stickiness and then make sure you put it on the right way. Line it up perfectly, press it down. And now we've got a nice brand new looking touch screen. Take the connection to the motherboard, just fold the ribbon cable over and then you've got this connection at the top, which is the touch. Make sure you fit that. And now we just need to line it all up, make sure the cable goes fully in, otherwise the DS light won't turn on. And then this white cable needs to be laid along here, like I'm showing here, before we flip over the motherboard. So we fold that over, pop that into place. We can attach the Wi-Fi chip, it won't boot without that. Don't forget to take the plastic adhesive off, which I nearly did. And then there's two screws to go in. The black ribbon cable is a bit of a tease to go underneath the game cart. But it's doable just make sure you push it in nice and straight pull that out and then they only line up to the corresponding places and then we just need to get these corner pieces on so the shoulder buttons are the spring that needs to go in and a little metal rod that goes through So the best way i found is to just place in the shoulder button as I'm showing and then once it's in place, use a pair of tweezers to bend around the pin and then this will make it spring back into action. But the slightest knock and they will come off. So you have to be really careful when you get to this point. Same on the other side, pop it into place, bend around the spring and then we're pretty much done on that side. Now we're going to move on to the bottom cover. So before I forget, you need to put this metal piece in where the battery cover is. If you don't put this in, then the battery cover screw won't be able to attach. So just pop that into place and then there you can see it goes on like that. I had forgotten so I had to go back to do it. Now the buttons go in. So you've got your volume button and your power button. So just make sure you put them in the right way. They will only go in one way. Just pop them in and then what I've found, a little trick, is obviously they're quite movable so the first thing we need to do is pick a location so the power switch is already set down and then I come with a bit of masking tape and then I place it over there and then that button is not going to move and it's also going to stay on same for the volume pick an end where the volume is going to be left or right masking tape on it and now that part's perfectly fine and then you can just come straight down with the back cover and then push it in you do too much messing then the springs and the shoulder buttons are going to come loose and not going to work. The great thing about this kit is they're totally expecting people to use a USB-C port so you don't need to do any modding to the actual case itself. The USB-C port fits perfectly. Now we can do our first test so we pop the battery in, make sure it's pushed right in. We'll take the masking tape off so we can turn it on. I just want to make sure that it boots up. This is the time to test because if it doesn't boot up now, more than likely one of the ribbon cables isn't in properly. But as you can see, it's turning on. We'll get the stylus and the touchscreen works as well. So the volume works, everything's good. Pop all the screws back into the back. Make sure you put the right ones in. You don't want to go through the casing. Each one's in the corners. And then we can put the battery in. You can put the battery cover on it. 
as I said, if you hadn't fitted the metal piece before, the screw wouldn't have fitted in. Now we've got all these covers to fit on. These first two go in the corners, cover the battery holes there. So nice and easy line them up, push them in. They won't come back out. Then we've got two on the top edges of the screen. This is to keep it nice and protected when it closes. So just line it up and then push it in. Be fit in nice and easy. And then you've got these four that cover the screw holes on the main screen board. Line them up, push them in, and then they all look nice and flush. Just have the peel off of the top screen, and then we're all pretty much done. One final thing is the sticker to go on the back. Extreme rate sticker. So normally the original one has all the Nintendo right on the back. This one doesn't have anything else. So you do really need a sticker to break it all up. And as you can see, it all looks good. So we're going to give it a test. So we're plugging our USB-C charger. And there we've got a charge light. And then just to show the amperage, we'll plug it in. I'm using a 5 volt charger. And you can see it's going through. And it's going to give it a nice charge. Now we can use a nice USB-C port instead of the specific Nintendo one. And there's the Game Boy Advance slot that we pop in there. And then that's it, we're done. So a quick look over. And as you can see, it's a lovely SNES style finish. The plastic has a really nice feel. I'm a big fan of Extreme Rates products. The USB-C port it's perfectly, no adjustments were needed. The shoulder buttons, all nice and springy, so the springs are incorrect. We're gonna to need to give it a little test, I think. So what else other than an R4 card needs to go in? So we'll pop that in. We will open it all up. There's the nice SNES colors. We'll slide the power button up to turn it on. And there's the classic startup screen. And then we'll clip through and just find ourselves a little game. So there's a few little games on there. We've got to go for the classic Super Mario Kart. And then we'll have a little bit of gameplay. So overall, it wasn't a bad mod. It was pretty easy to be fair. To swap over the top screen is the hardest section, but if you take your time, then it's not the worst thing to do. The S lights are relatively cheap. You can get a good bundle for not much money. You just have to make sure you're getting ones which don't have any kind of screen bleed on them. The digitizers are cheap as a replacement, so a lot of the ones I had had poor digitizers, but they only cost a couple of pounds to be able to get a brand new style looking bottom touch screen. And the USB-C port also is really cheap. I'll link everything I use in the description, but don't forget to use the extreme rate 10% discount code that's linked in the description too. So any questions, please leave it in the comments. But thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.